Purple dead nettle or Lamium purpureum is an easy to forage wild edible and medicinal plant that is most likely growing in your backyard or somewhere near you. You've probably seen this weed and didn't even know that it has edible and medicinal uses. Purple dead nettle is one of those plants that when you see a picture of it, you immediately recognize it but never knew what it was called. In this video, we'll learn how to identify it and use this miraculous plant so that you can have another herbal ally to add to your edible and medicinal arsenal. Purple dead nettle is an annual herbaceous flowering plant native to Europe and Asia. Its arrival in North America is believed to be through human activities, specifically European colonization, and the subsequent movement of people and goods across continents. It is thought that purple dead nettle was introduced to North America unintentionally as a contaminant in seeds, soil, and agricultural products brought by the European settlers. As these settlers established new colonies and cultivated land, they inadvertently introduced non-native plant species, including purple dead nettle. Once introduced, purple dead nettle adapted well to the North American environment due to its ability to thrive in disturbed areas such as fields, gardens, and roadsides. The plant is known for its resilience, fast growth, and ability to reproduce through both seeds and vegetative propagation. These characteristics allowed it to spread and naturalize in various regions of the United States. It's called dead nettle because of its apparent resemblance to stinging nettle minus the sting. Identification. Purple dead nettle is a member of the mint family. It has heart-shaped or spade-shaped leaves with a square stem. Towards the top of the plant, the leaves take on a purplish hue, hence the name. As the plant matures, tiny, elongated, purple-pink flowers will develop. It has square stems that grow 2 to 8 inches in height. The leaves have fine hairs and are green at the bottom and shade to a purplish color at the top. They are 1 to 2 inches long and broad with a half inch to 1 inch petiole or leaf stalk and wavy serrated margins. The zygomorphic flowers are bright red-purple with a top hood-like petal, two lower lip petal lobes, and minute fang-like lobes between. The corella shows a line of hairs near the base of the tube. They may be produced throughout the year, including mild weather in the winter. This allows bees to gather their nectar for food when few other nectar sources are available. It's also a prominent source of pollen for bees in March and April when bees need the floral-based protein to build their hives. It thrives in soils that have been disturbed such as gardens, flower beds, roadsides, and farmers fields. Purple nettle loves nitrogen-rich soil, such as the soil around chicken pens and gardens. However, it will grow in a wide variety of soils, including poorer quality soils. It blooms in the spring and can sometimes be found growing up through the melting spring snow. The plant will grow throughout the spring and summer months. Because it's one of the first plants on the scene, it's an important food for native pollinators and honeybees. One of the best things you can do for pollinators in the spring is to hold off on mowing your lawn for a while. Letting this beautiful plant grow as pollinators emerge after a long winter is an easy way to help with the pollinator crisis. Not only do bees seem to prefer it over other plants, even dandelion, but it is one of the first plants to flower in the spring, in mild climates and may even flower through the winter, making it a vital bee forage. Look for purple dead nettle along previously tilled ground with well-draining soil. It can often appear as a ground cover, too it loves moist soil and sunny spots. Because they're in the mint family, they can spread like wildfire, even in your garden. You may not mind it being in your garden as harvesting is much easier, but it can be invasive. If you want to grow purple dead netto, I recommend growing it in a container. You can use any collection container you wish, as there's no need to worry about spreading spores as you would as foraging mushrooms. Like all mint, they reproduce from their roots. Purple dead nettle lookalikes. Purple dead nettle is often found alongside henbit which is easily mistaken for it since they both have similar looking leaves and similar bright colored flowers. They can be distinguished by the stalked leaves of red dead nettle on the flower stem compared to the unstalked leaves on henbit. Most of the other plants that might be confused with, such as henbit, woolly mint, and catnip, are edible as well. Woolly mint and catnip have strong scents that are different from dead nettle's strong earthy scent. They also do not get strongly purple like purple dead nettle. Henbit has leaves that are roughly heart-shaped with lots of shallow scallops on the edge as well as a few deep scallops. Purple dead nettle leaves are also heart-shaped and have shallow scallops, but they lack the deep scallops that henbit leaves have. Henbit's leaves attach to the stem in pairs with significant spacing between most pairs. Purple dead nettle, on the other hand, has long, gangly stems followed by a bunch of pairs of leaves at the top in the summer. In the spring, dead nettle does have spacing between leaf pairs as well. 
Both dead nettle and hembit have square stems, but dead nettle stems are significantly bigger. There is some variation in how these plants grow, but typically purple dead nettle gets bigger than hembit. Hembit is also edible and could be used in this recipe instead of dead nettle, but it's always good to know exactly what plant you are eating. Creeping Charlie has also been mistaken for purple dead nettle, which can also be called gill over the ground or ground ivy. It has a minty smell and similar purple flowers like purple dead nettle. Purple dead nettle is not only a wild edible green, but a highly nutritious superfood and herbal multivitamin. It contains several vitamins and minerals that contribute to its nutritional profile. While the exact nutrient content may vary depending on factors such as growing conditions and plant maturity, here are some vitamins and minerals commonly found in the plant. It is a great source of vitamin C, vitamin A, iron, magnesium, and potassium. Culinary Uses Young plants have edible tops and leaves used in salads or in stir-fried as a spring vegetable. If finely chopped, it can also be used in sauces. It's the perfect herb to dehydrate and add to your own custom powdered smoothie greens. Sometimes it goes in my scrambled eggs and I add a handful of the leaves to my salad along with plenty of other fresh greens. You could even chop it up and add it to tacos instead of cilantro. It can also be eaten raw, but to be honest, it's not as tasty as other spring greens such as chickweed or henbit. You can include it in pesto, soups, or quiches in place of or combined with spinach and nettle. The plant has a mild and slightly tangy flavor. Its taste is often described as delicate and reminiscent of other leafy greens. The young leaves tend to be milder in flavor compared to the more mature ones. Some people compare the taste of purple dead nettle to spinach or lettuce with a hint of earthiness. The leaves have a tender texture, making them enjoyable to eat both raw and cooked. When consumed raw, purple dead nettle leaves add a subtle herbaceous note to salads and other fresh dishes. They can also be cooked lightly by sautéing or steaming, which softens the leaves while retaining their mild flavor. It's worth noting that the taste can vary slightly depending on factors such as plant maturity, growing conditions, and personal preferences. As with any wild edible plant, it's recommended to try a small portion initially to assess the taste and determine if it suits your palate. On its own, it's a bit strong tasting, very herbal and grassy, and the leaves are fuzzy, which doesn't give the most appealing mouthfeel. That being said, it's still a nutritious wild green and it's worth incorporating into your diet. Wild foods are always more nutrient dense than cultivated food. Adding even a few forage plants to your diet is a great step towards better health. Medicinal uses. Purple dead nettle also has many medicinal benefits. It's known in the herbal world as being an astringent, diuretic, diaphoretic, and purgative. It's also anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antifungal. It can be used to make a tincture for seasonal allergies, as a poultice for wounds, and to make infused oils and salves that are useful for first aid and aches and pains. Herbalists use the plant in many remedies. One of these is purple dead nettle salve that can be used on irritated, itchy, or sore skin. It can also be made into a tincture that is said to be good for pain relief and have anti-inflammatory properties. The leaves can be used on external wounds or cuts or as a poultice similar to how you would use yarrow or plantain. Purple dead nettle can be made into an infusion or tea with either fresh or dried plant material. This may be the simplest way to enjoy its benefits, although it may also have a laxative effect if used in large amounts. It's also good for the kidneys and may even help with seasonal allergies. It can even be used to make a natural pale green dye for wool and yarn. This is Blake from Walk in the Wild, and if you are enjoying our channel and want to learn more about wild edibles, foraging, and herbalism, please like and subscribe, and we promise to keep those epic plant videos coming. Thank you so much for watching, and always keep your eyes open, because you never know what you might find that's edible out in the wild.